Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers traffic direction, probable cause arrests, and reckless driving, and is brought to us by the Waterbury Police Department's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On December 13th, 2022, Officer James Hinkle of the Waterbury Police Department was directing traffic in Waterbury, Connecticut after a mechanical failure by the traffic lights at an intersection. The interaction that followed was captured by the dash cam on Officer Hinkle cruiser, the footage from which will be shown first, and Officer Hinkle's body camera. Now. Did you not see this bright yellow vest standing in the middle of the street? No, I did. I thought you were leaving. No, before. this means lying. stop. I, this means stop. I didn't see that until I was already passed. And then you I, still drove by me. I'm so sorry, sir. I didn't license and know. registration now. Okay. No, license and registration I, now. Okay, 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 okay. You almost ran over an officer standing sorry, in the middle of the street. I, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize what was going on. That was very confusing. It's a bright yellow jacket standing in the middle of the street. What don't you understand? All the other cars were going No, they weren't. You were the only vehicle coming from that way. You almost ran me over in the middle of the street. Officer Hinkle screams at the driver for failing to stop at his signal, even though the driver explained that she was confused and thought she was free to travel through the intersection. The dash cam footage of the incident shows that while Officer Hinkle did raise his arm towards the driver's vehicle, it does not appear that he complied with traffic direction best practices when attempting to signal to her to stop. According to the basic traffic control procedures for law enforcement officers issued by the Maryland Police Training Commission, a common method a patrolman can use to stop traffic involves the officer looking directly at the driver, extending their arm, and pointing their finger at the driver. Then, the procedures suggest that the officer maintain this position and watch the driver until the signal is observed. Once the driver sees the signal, the officer should raise their hand so that their palm is toward the driver and hold this position until the driver stops. Similarly, a guide on using hand and arm signals to direct traffic published by the Virginia Defense Force instructs officers who are directing traffic from the right to turn left to start by looking to the left and thrust Thrusting their left hand towards the traffic, with the hand flat and above the officer's headgear and the palm facing traffic. The instructions also direct the officer to, quote, allow the driver time to react and bring his vehicle to a stop. Finally, the Seattle Police Department manual states that, quote, it is important that officers position themselves so that their hand signals can be seen from a long distance, and that, quote, officers should use an open hand palm out sign to indicate stop. In this instance, the dash cam footage shows that Officer Hinkle did not maintain eye contact with the driver to ensure she noticed his signal and stopped. In fact, he only quickly glanced in her direction and then turned his head to face oncoming traffic. Likewise, instead of fully extending his palm in the driver's direction, Officer Hingle did not flatten the palm and only extended it in a claw-like position facing the ground. He also only raised his hand to about waist level instead of over his head, where it would be clearly visible. Out of your car and stand next to the fender. Leave your purse in the car. Where do you work? I work for a clothing company in California. What are you doing here today? I'm going to Target. You're going to Target? Yeah, just do a pickup. What is such an important factor that me standing in the middle of the street Sir, I stopping swear. you and you try to run me over? Sir, I swear. And I then you looked at me, you waved at me, and then you kept going anyway. I, I swear I was not trying to run you over. I thought you were... The cars were going. I'm telling you to stop in the middle of the street. And hand. you wave at me I, and keep going. I... I saw your hand before, and I was too late to stop. And no, it wasn't. You were doing 10 sorry. miles an hour, and you still drove by me. I'm sorry. You didn't even sir. attempt to stop your car. Sir, 
sir. You're lucky you're not in handcuffs right this second. I'm very sorry, sir. I really am Explain very to sorry. my kids why why they don't have a dad sir. a week before Christmas because you're trying to run somebody over. Officer Hinkle repeatedly claims that the driver was trying to hit him, even though the dash cam footage from his cruiser shows him lunging toward her vehicle as she drove by and tells her she's lucky she's not in handcuffs. We will discuss the offenses that Officer Hinkle asserts that the driver actually committed later in this episode, but for now, it should be noted that striking an officer who was directing traffic is a distinct violation under Connecticut law. According to Section 14-223A of the Connecticut General Statutes, quote, any operator of a motor vehicle who strikes any officer with such motor vehicle while such officer is engaged in traffic control or regulation, provided such officer is in uniform or prominently displaying the badge of his office, shall be fined not less than $150 or more than $200, and for a subsequent offense, shall be fined not more than $250 or imprisoned not more than 30 days or both. As we have discussed before here on ATA, it is well established that officers can arrest individuals for minor offenses committed in their presence without violating the Constitution, as long as they have probable cause that the individual violated the law. The Supreme Court held in the 2001 case of Atwater v. City of Lago Vista that the Fourth Amendment does not forbid an officer from making a warrantless arrest for minor misdemeanor offenses, even if the offense is not punishable by imprisonment and is only punishable by a fine. Rather, the court concluded that, quote, if an officer has probable cause to believe that an individual has committed even a very minor criminal offense in his presence, he may, without violating the Fourth Amendment, arrest the offender. Therefore, a court would likely hold that Officer Hinkle was within his constitutional authority to arrest the driver if it is believed he had probable cause that she had committed an offense. Sir, I promise you see the bright lights flashing in the middle of the street? That means you just caution there's a cop out there. I got kids at home and you almost ran me over okay. a week before Christmas. Sir, when I see a flashing yellow light... It's not flashing, it's red and blue! It was That's a cop car standing in the middle of the street flashing lights! No, it's not an accident, you're just being irresponsible. And then waves at me and still tries to drive by me. Run her, please, and make sure she's valid. A week before Christmas, I almost get ran over. All right. Yeah. I got two kids at home waiting for me to come home tonight. Sir, I'm very sorry. I'm sorry doesn't break it. You looked right at me and still decided to drive by me. No, you weren't. I was in the middle of the intersection. Emotionally. Would you mind filling this out for me? My hands are a little shaky right now. Failing to obey a signal of the officer. Reckless driving. Officer Hinkle asks one of the other officers to fill out a citation for failure to obey an officer's commands and reckless driving. Under Section 14-223 of the Connecticut General Statutes, which defines the offense of failing to stop when signaled or disobeying the direction of an officer, quote, whenever the operator of any motor vehicle fails promptly to bring his motor vehicle to a full stop upon the signal of any officer in uniform or prominently displaying the badge of his office, or disobeys the direction of such officer with relation to the operation of his motor vehicle, he shall be deemed to have committed an infraction. Additionally, Section 14-222 of the Connecticut General Statutes, which describes the offense of reckless driving, states that, quote, no person shall operate any motor vehicle upon any public highway of the state recklessly, having regard to the width, traffic, and use of such highway, roads, school property, or parking area, the intersection of streets, and the weather conditions. While there is no definition of recklessly found in Title 14 of the Connecticut General Statutes, which contains the state's motor vehicle laws, including the offense of reckless driving, Section 53A-3 of the General Statutes includes a definition for offenses under the Connecticut Penal Code, which is codified in Title 53A of the General Statutes. Section 53A-3 states that, quote, a person acts recklessly with respect to a result or to a circumstance described by a statute defining an offense when he is aware of and consciously disregards a substantial and unjustifiable risk that such 
such result will occur or that such circumstance exists. The risk must be of such nature and degree that disregarding it constitutes a gross deviation from the standard of conduct that a reasonable person would observe in the situation. As the Hartford County Court of Common Pleas in Connecticut explained in the 1974 case of Maloney v. Commissioner of Motor Vehicles, quote, Recklessness requires a conscious choice of a course of action, either with knowledge of the serious danger to others involved in it, or with knowledge of facts which would disclose such danger to any reasonable man. Recklessness is more than negligence, and more than even gross negligence. Similarly, in the 1999 case of State versus Sandra O, oh, the appellate court of Connecticut clarified that, quote, it is reckless indifference to the safety of others which supplies the criminal intent necessary to warrant conviction. While speed alone may be insufficient to warrant a conviction for reckless driving, it may be taken into consideration in conjunction with other circumstances to show a reckless disregard of consequences. Here, while the driver may have failed to stop when signaled, although it is certainly questionable whether Officer Hinkle's hand signals were sufficient to communicate in order to stop, it is unlikely that she could be found guilty of reckless driving for simply misunderstanding the situation, because she would not have the reckless mental state that is necessary to sustain a conviction. See, this is why I was trying to direct traffic, because it's... I was out here for 25, 30 minutes I doing heard traffic. You. Could you get so, yeah. 30 minutes doing traffic and almost got ran over once. Everybody else, no problem, no problem. Anytime you see flashing red and blue lights in the middle of the street, it means there's cops present. What should I say? No, stop talking, stop talking. And it means you need to pay attention because there's going to be police officers out and about, okay? This bright yellow vest, it's very, very bright. It's neon yellow because it stands out, okay? I'm standing in the middle of the street telling you to stop. That means stop. I'm not waving hi, Merry Christmas. This means stop. Listen, when you see me do this and try to get your attention and stop you again, it doesn't mean wave back to me and keep driving by me. Stop, stop. I'm sorry. Then what were you doing in your I vehicle? I was paying attention to the cars in front of me. There were no cars in front of you. There were zero cars in front of you. You were the only vehicle traveling on that road for 500 feet. There were no vehicles in front of you. Okay. No, there okay. wasn't. Okay. Okay. She almost runs me over. We you need to calm yourself. The driver was issued a citation and allowed to leave the scene, and the charges were later dropped. This incident sparked an internal affairs investigation into Officer Hinkle's conduct, and he was immediately placed on paid administrative leave. On January 9th, 2023, Officer Hinkle was terminated from the Waterbury Police Department after the investigation determined that his conduct, actions, and behaviors were in violation of department policies. In an official statement on the termination, Chief Fernando Spagnolo noted that, quote, his conduct during this encounter with a citizen of the community is unacceptable and not representative of the men and women serving the Waterbury Police Department. WPD officers are trained to demonstrate the highest level of professionalism when performing their duties. In an interview, Chief Spagnolo also stated that, quote, As far as we are concerned, that is not behavior we condone. Our officers are not trained to act that way. We will not tolerate that type of actions or behavior toward the public from our police officers. Chief Spagnolo also reached out to the driver in this altercation and explained in an interview that, quote, She's been very amicable to us. She's come to the police station and been in my office and told me she recognizes that almost everyone at the Waterbury Police has treated her with respect. Overall, Officer Hinkle gets an F for using unclear hand signals when directing traffic and then flying into a rage when a citizen misunderstood the meaning of those signals and screaming at a citizen and directing profanity toward her. Officer Hinkle's response not only demonstrated a tremendous amount of anger and a total lack of professionalism, but it also revealed the type of so-called victim mentality that can be dangerous when left unchecked in a police department. Instead of seeing this incident as the honest mistake it truly appeared to be, Officer Hinkle took the driver's actions personally, accusing her of attempting to kill him right before Christmas, when in reality her vehicle actually came nowhere close to hitting him. These overdramatic statements, as well as his unprofessional behavior, suggest that Officer Hinkle does not have the steadfast temperament that's necessary to be an effective police 
police officer. And I commend Chief Spagnolo and the Waterbury Police Department for quickly taking action and terminating him. The driver gets an A for maintaining her composure throughout the encounter, despite Officer Hinkle's immensely unprofessional behavior, and attempting to take responsibility for her actions, even though it is questionable whether the miscommunication was actually her fault. While it is possible that she was not paying enough attention to the road to notice Officer Hinkle, there is no way I can assess this based on the available footage. The driver claimed that she was confused about what she was supposed to do. And this seems reasonable given the fact that oncoming traffic was driving through the intersection, and considering the lack of clarity in Officer Hinkle's hand signals and the lack of attention he gave to ensuring she understood his commands and stopped her vehicle. Once the driver realized her mistake, she immediately pulled over and apologized profusely for the air, and remained respectful and relatively calm when faced with screaming and profanity from Officer Hinkle. And I applaud her for refusing to escalate the situation by mirroring Officer Hinkle's inappropriate behavior. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.